Um, hi, my name's Tom. Uh, I want to thank the program committee for giving me a chance to speak today. This is going to be slightly unusual compared to what's followed, what's preceded. Um, for uh, those of you who are allergic to layer eight, layer nine, apologies in advance. This is pretty much what I'm talking about. So uh, this is my first analog. Uh, been a pretty frequent contributor and participant in AP Nick and Apricot for the last few years that I've been living in Asia, but glad to be here. So who am I? What have I done? Um, back in the mid-90s, I did some work with the FCC, International Bureau, uh, during something that was called the Benchmark Settlements Initiative, which effectively uh, you, you could describe as the U.S. Uh, international long-distance providers de-peering their foreign counterparts, the telcos uh, overseas who terminated international telecom traffic. A few years later, I was um, also fortunate to be in the right neighborhood to work with APEC and the PEC, the private sector uh, associate affiliated entity, to work on something called the Internet Charging Arrangements for Internet's, International Charging Arrangements for Internet Services debate uh, on behalf of U.S. providers. Um, shortly after that, uh, that basically that was a, a time in which foreign, foreign telcos that would become ISPs were seeking legal redress from what they perceived to be the uh, excessive market power of uh, U.S.-based uh, international telcos uh, come ISPs. So maybe that begs the question, am I in the wrong conference? I don't think so. Um, it seems to me that both of these events, both of, both of these transitions had ultimately had very significant uh, impact on what you do here in this room. Uh, I imagine many of you were around in 97 when the, uh, a, a similar kind of a deep hearing exercise happened in the major peering points around the United States. That followed the, the telco side deep hearing by about six months. And uh, f following the failure of the foreign ISPs to secure any kind of relief um, in international government bodies from what they perceived to be U.S. market power, uh, they began uh, taking a market solution and buying up some uh, U.S.-based ISPs and entrepreneurial cable systems. So I would say that there continues to be a really strong tie between infrastructure ownership issues and how the, uh, the Internet is ultimately structured. Oh, um, this is drifting off the bottom here. Okay. So what have I done more recently? Um, for the last four years, I worked on uh, ATDN, the last two of them in Asia, Senior Operations Manager for uh, the Asia-Pacific region. So I saw a lot of interesting things. Uh, I've left, I'm no longer an operator, I guess I'm a, a researcher at the moment, um, working with Packet Clearinghouse, State Department, uh, uh, working on the OECD telecom, uh, is it information, computing communications policy task force. This is actually the older version of the talk. Anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue um, and jump over things. Uh, okay, anyway, <clears throat> so here's a provocation. Um, uh, widely a uh, uh, commonly noted fact. Autonomous systems are merely an implementation detail of uh, interdomain routing. So it begs the question, to, to, to my mind, uh, what is interdomain routing an implementation detail of? Actually, this is very radically different. He's saying, he's saying these aren't his current slides. This is, this is the version that, um, that, that I sent a week ago. Okay. Um, sorry. I apologize. You have, you have yeah, I do. Excuse me. It's just going along smoothly here. I know. Sorry about the delay. Okay. 
Susan says the, uh, the correct slide set is on the web. <laughs> Okay, once more with conviction. Hmm, okay, I think we're going to have to live with. Strange. Well, okay, enough delay. Anyway, to continue. Uh, okay, if, uh, if autonomous systems are merely an implementation detail of interdomain routing, um, what, is, what is the significance of interdomain routing itself? Uh, that's just a preamble. Let me jump back to sort of basic propositions that I want to pose to you all and tell me what I'm thinking that is, uh, that's wrong. Many of the debates that, that I'm involved in and that I hear about rarely um, that are relevant to Internet governance and control cluster around issues that you might describe in terms of eyeballs and content. Universal access, email, e-commerce, e-government, e-whatever you think of. These are all sort of content-related issues. I, I would submit that this is, in essence, what the digital divide debate is all about. So uh, another uh, uh, go, uh, reaching. Eyeballs and content, or access and services, uh, resolve to public IP addresses thanks to semantic overloading, which is the source of concern in other areas, uh, they're measurable on a comparative, if not absolute, basis by means of public IP. Now, obviously, there are lots of caveats that we'll talk about uh, towards the end of this presentation, but the whole concept of address planning management assumes some sane relationship between address needs and address allocations. And I think for people who are familiar with address planning and management, that it's possible to reverse engineer some sense from the, uh, the routed IP that's out there based on that knowledge. So uh, another provocation perhaps. Today the eyeballs part of that equation is fundamentally de dependent on basic telecom last mile. And this component of the equation is measurable in terms of DS zeros, DSOs, uh, which are reported, gr growth of which is reported by telcos annually to the ITU. This is a, a good record of uh, of basic telecom growth stretching back decades. Um, there's a cable pr uh, uh, represents a small deviation to this, um, but I would say it's, it's still pretty small. So applying the same rules of thumb used to request and implement IP addresses in a network, one can get a general sense of the scope of national network development. And in fact, what I'm suggesting is, what if you owned a country? And what if you were the address planner for that country? What would you be, what would you be doing to try to provision for that? And just starting to uh, reach for some basic rules of thumb ideas about how you might go through that process. So I balance in content, peak simultaneous users plus locally hosted content, uh, plus foreign customers and content since uh, autonomous systems are, are not geographic. And um, a, uh, an invisible factor would be then the uh, local customer's content of foreign ISPs, which would not be really measured in, 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 uh, in, this, in this term. So what do I mean by nationality on layer three? I think this is probably not, uh, not controversial. This is sort of the same metrics that have been used by CADA since their BGP to country project a few years ago. Just uh, uh, identifying autonomous originating ASs with their country of association, whatever the association means currently, and uh, allocating the IPs that are announced by them to that country. So does, does, that, uh, does that framing, does the framing in national terms make sense? Does it, does it have any, does it purchase anything? Here are some comparisons of uh, the number of routed IP, public IP, in the, uh, in the routing cable over time, over a two-year period, compared to the fixed telecom infrastructure in those countries. Um, this is not entirely a random sampling of countries. These are, with the exception of one or two, these are countries that I've built networks in uh, for AOL. 
So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the infrastructure in, in, most, of these, um, in most of these markets. And uh, the, num the lines make some sense to me. Uh, China being, um, having a really, really low ratio, uh, and the United States having a very, very high ratio on the order of, what, uh, one, two, three, three or four orders of magnitude greater. So why are there such huge variations? Obviously, there are temporal factors. The, uh, the Internet has basically started at different times in different places. Uh, of course, that's also true for um, the fixed telecom infrastructure which is, is uh, itself continues to be uh, uh, differentially distributed across, across countries. So one would think that the, um, the telecom ratio would, would, would help to mitigate some of that, but um, the, the IP variations are, in fact, substantially more pronounced. Uh, geographic factors, I think it's pretty well understood that um, population density has a significant um, reduced costs. And uh, would, would tend, you tend to see uh, 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 faster rates of network development over, over more densely populated areas than others. Again, the uh, DS0 kind of denominator helps to wash some of that out because the same factors are at play and they're mainly terrestrial infrastructure related factors. So international factors, the do, uh, do countries that have um, large international networks, is, is that an explainer for the big differences? Um, well. France has got uh, one of the most extensive uh, network operators. Uh, of course, the United States, I think it goes without saying that, that that's a, a significant factor. But ab apart from that, um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to explain Korea, Australia, or any of the other operators uh, 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 on, on, those, on those lines. So uh, we'll get down to the question that I hope to explore with your assistance over time, domestic factors. Does the d domestic, does the structure or the pattern of local intermain routing affect the growth and affect, affect the growth of eyeballs and content within that country? Um, so here's looking at the number of, here's a, a trend that I think is interesting. The, um, the global average of routed IP announced per ASN, this is average globally uh, over the last, actually over a two-year period ending about 11 months ago. And uh, the line at the bottom is an absolute number of ASNs in the routing table. So in effect, uh, as the number of ASNs goes up, the, um, the, the global average of, of routed IP per ASN is going down. And in a purely formal mathematical sense, that, that, that pattern sort of suggests specialization. Smaller, you know, basically, distribution of uh, of productive activities over smaller units. Um, so would that make a difference and what kind of difference would it make? We have a sort of model to suggest one idea and it's a well-known model uh, outside of this community. So Adam Smith, 1776, some of you all may have read it, The Wealth of Nations. In effect, it suggests that, uh, that systems of specialized interacting and competing units of production collectively constitute more efficient form of economic organization than unicellular and undifferentiated systems of similar size. Smith was writing at a time when uh, uh, he was effectively writing from, from a position, from a country uh, uh, that was enjoying substantial economic power, uh, but was, was writing about uh, other systems uh, that preferred a different form of economic organization, uh, which was basically a combination of aggressive international expansion combined with closed domestic markets. It's called mercantilism. In effect, uh, Smith's argument was that mercantilism herded uh, its uh, practitioners as much or more th than, uh, than their neighbors. So I, I think um, what, what I'm hoping to do is, in effect, to, to test the relevance of this broad economic proposition against the record of, uh, of interdomain routing and the, the growth of autonomous systems over time. Um, it's pretty clear that uh, ASNs, uh, unlike some other basic measures of, uh, of telecom infrastructure and even um, routed IP, are, are, are not predictably distributed across countries. There's wide variation. And uh, for operators who've operated outside the United States, it's, it's very clear that 
a lot of those uh, have to do with layer nine issues, um, which I'm probably not going to talk about at great length today. But anyway, uh, here's another set of comparisons, uh, looking again at the uh, ratio of routed IP to physical terrestrial um, national infrastructure, and looking at the um, call it the ratio of concentration, the the average uh, routed IP per ASN that's associated with that particular nation. And again, you, you start to see uh, a, a, pretty, a pretty solid inverse relationship. Countries that have more, that, that where network, uh, uh, network development is concentrated more heavily into a smaller number of networks uh, tend, to, tend to deliver uh, a, a, a similarly, a, a related uh, uh, smaller number of of good things from the internet, eyeballs and content, compared to uh, na national network economies that encompass a larger number of uh, of autonomous systems. So that's um that proposition I've been testing, and uh, uh, on the advice of counsel, I've I have ex I have uh, removed some of the the, the testing results here because they they are a little bit ambiguous. Um, it, it's very clear that there are, there are associations and correlations here. Uh, at, currently, you, just using an absolute number of ASNs, it's, it's hard to, um, to get a model. Uh, the, the model tends to show the distribution of countries accurately, but the margin of error, or the standard error is somewhere in the vicinity of a slash 9 or slash 10. So uh, since that actually is larger than the total national allocations of maybe a third of the 50 country set that I've been using, I would say the model is not ready for prime time yet. So I'm going to a, a, a couple of uh, progressively higher uh, levels of granularity. I want to look at the number of ASN adjacencies um, in basically across all of the autonomous systems associated with a given national jurisdiction. And then finally look at the ASN adjacencies separated in into uh, whether or not they're adjacencies with domestic networks and international networks to get a, a clearer picture of whether or not the, the relationship, the pattern of growth that Adam Smith described a couple hundred years ago is relevant to layer three. Of course, all this begs a bunch of huge questions and I'm, I'm hoping that you all will help me uh, either, either uh, uh, clarify them or persuade me that this is really not a valid uh, a way to approach this question. Um, I've had four years as an operator. I've done address planning and I've done layer two, I've done peering and layer two infrastructure uh, planning and and deployment in six or seven countries. So I'm not a I'm not naive about interpreting interpreting these numbers. Um, look at the dependent variable I'm looking at is routed IP. Obviously, NAT uh, RFC 1918 is is used differently in different countries. Um, I think there are ways that you can get a sense of the differences in usage through some indirect measures. I think also, uh, as an economist, I can shift from the predictive or empirical to the normative without blinking and say, uh, along with many other people in the industry, that NAT is inherently uh, uh, detrimental and that net, net, national network economies that elect to use NAT on a systematic Economy-wide basis is some sort of substitute for for public uh, for public internetworking. Um, in effect, it, the measures that that I will be using that that show that they are that much smaller than they should be given the certain inputs um, is is not a is not a, a is not a false positive or false negative. It's actually an accurate reflection of the sort of diminished future that those economies might enjoy. Uh, pre cider space well we can uh, we have a pretty good record of when when uh, address allocations went out and if it's a, if it's a given that uh, allocations that that went out before cider are they actually reflect uh, uh, address for address less stuff then that's probably something that that's a basically a a bias that I think that with careful um, correction of the data could be addressed uh, uh, multiple origin AS address space. I, I don't think that's a big problem. Actually, I think it may be a, an, an interesting indicator of some interesting national variations. In some of the countries that I've worked in that have very few 
that have highly concentrated uh, 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 patterns networks. Uh, one of the reasons for that is there are actually juridical prohibitions to autonomous networking. There are commercial restrictions. Uh, upstream providers will not will will not peer with customers. They will not route an AS even if one can is allocated. And um, there is no means to do multi-homing in, in any sensible way. Uh, so there's really less of a demand for for uh, uh, for running your own independent network. Uh, most things might actually it could be a good indicator, though, of uh, of uh, multi-homing through static routes under a single A, uh, basically without without an AS. And I think actually that is something that's a kind of um, a pattern which is commonplace in the kind of uh, countries that that pursue a different kind of uh, 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 network network development patterns than say the one we have in the United States. IPv6, not really an issue yet, I, as long as it's provider, not provider independent. Uh, I think that uh, if, if and when the transition to IPv6 comes along, uh, once the bugs get worked out in this methodology, it could still be legitimate. So what about the, um, the validity of my independent variable, of the autonomous system? Um, uh, an autonomous system, I, I, I think of from, from practical operator experience, is a tool for exercising beneficial control over distributed network infrastructure, um, or for benefiting from someone else's distributed network infrastructure, in other words, multi-homing. Uh, and I didn't add this, but, but um, with ownership, whatever that means, uh, being optional. So in effect, these are, this is a control structure, uh, can be completely independent, orthogonal to ownership structures. Whether or not it, it, it is or not, of course, is a layer nine question. And I think that's, uh, the variations in layer nine are a very good uh, explanation of why there's such a, a very, very major uh, uh, differences in the distribution of ASs over, over national, national economies. Um, uh, what about, uh, so anyway, but there are obviously some, some, some caveats to interpretation of this number as well. Um, autonomous routing domains below the, uh, the scope of an individual AS, effectively customers. Um, inter international customers in this case could be uh, uh, an interesting source of, I mean, basically it can only be inferred indirectly. Um, but I think basically you can, I think you can infer them indirectly from some of the other patterns that I'm examining. Uh, Multi-AS autonomous routing domains. Uh, from what I've, what I can tell from uh, route views of the last couple of years and some other materials I have, um, m in most cases the autonomous systems that collectively constitute um, larger multi-AS ARDs are all associated with the same country. I think British Telecom is one significant exception, but I haven't found any others yet. Um, uh, again, th that would that would beg some questions about the relevance of those. Non-commercial autonomous systems, of course, there's tons and tons in the United States. There are actually, in most in most countries, there are several. So again, it's a, a it's a question of relative differences rather than absolute. But if it becomes, if if I need to tweak things more, I can can assign them different weights. Network economies of private autonomous systems. There are some kind. Of, in effect, there are countries where. Uh, where most of the action happens uh, uh, below the horizon, so to speak. And if, if in fact, the uh, interaction across those thresholds between uh, private ASs, which, are, uh, which may or may not be independently operated, if, if that makes a difference, then my data will be wrong and it, it basically uh, uh, it, the, uh, there'll be no uh, evidence will suggest that this is not a, a useful model. Um, variations in size and scope of ASs. Obviously, there are huge uh, orders of magnitude differences between the largest and the smallest autonomous systems uh, in the routing table. And um, uh, if, if, if those differences in size make a difference, I would say that they will be borne out when I do the three-part test, the, the last two parts of which are still pending, uh, looking at adjacencies. So I'm hoping that you all will help me uh, Think about this methodology, and I may approach some of you to, uh, uh, with with questions about what your networks look like. Um, I think, I think, uh, 
In effect, my intuition is that, as Adam Smith would have predicted, that the, the, the net product of your collective efforts in, a, in a, an extremely diverse network economy like the one that is here in the United States, that, that they sum up to something greater than the individual components. And that that net difference will, will, will not be so apparent in economies where they're uh, much more highly concentrated um, sort of uh, internetworking patterns. That's my intuition. It, it remains to be seen whether it'll be borne out with the data. Uh, it's a big project I have ahead of me, um, and uh, I will welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. Ah, okay. Um, the thing in the corner is a is a is a, a joke. Uh, in Chinese. It's um, from the Tao Te Ching, a 6th century BC political treatise. Uh, uh, Lao Tzu, giving some advice to the emperor of China during the Zhou Dynasty, said that ruling a great empire is like cooking a small fish. The idea is that um, if you mess with it too much, it is quite likely to fall apart. Um, and uh, I just basically uh, injected the uh, Wang Lu, which means internet there. So managing a great internet is like cooking a small fish. Um, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, we do have some time for questions, if there are any. Hi, Dave. Hi, Randy. Randy Bush, I am Jay. Um, a friend of mine is too shy to speak. Um, yes, I do have shy friends. I know it's difficult to work. Um, so let me see if I understand. Can we say it simply? Um, um, countries where there are monopoly PTTs and everything's controlled have less of what we perceive as good, which is eyeballs and content. Is that what you're saying? And you believe you can measure that by looking at ASNs and IPs? That is correct, sir. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much.